Hello guys, so I'm still in the DMV area and I'm speaking with the producers behind the upcoming reality TV show, My African Love. Kobe, I mean, I've known you for ages, uh, from music to film, and now you're branching into uh, reality TV. And you're not just doing it on a, a small scale. I can see from watching from afar that this is quite a heavy uh, production. Why did you decide to go into uh, go this direction? Well, I mean, again, thank you for um, you know being here in the DMV with us, and I appreciate it. I've known you for a long time as well, and I I think we all have come far from our career, mm -hmm. where we started, and I think from music things changed, and I I branched into movie, and now, like you said, first time producing a reality show. Um, I think things change, time changes, and you follow the tre the trend of how things things is going. After one night in Vegas, um, I figure out that the whole industry has changed. You know, things are becoming a streaming, and people don't want to watch sometimes even hour and a half. You know, uh, film. Mm -hmm. So, cut to the chase. A lot of things people want to watch quick. You know, fast. And I mm -hmm. thought that um, reality show or series will be something that is going to be taking place. And if you look at the trend, it's what is taking place now in the industry. And that's why I jump into it, and um, here we are with the, uh, this project. In terms of inspiration, how did you come up by this particular concept? Uh, uh, amazingly, uh, there's, it's a real story, it's a real thing that relates to people that I've been encountered with. Um, most of them are Africans born here that want to be in a relationship. Ideally, they want to, you know, follow their parents' trend. You know, from Ghana, I want to marry a Ghanaian, or Nigeria, I want to marry a Nigerian. However, because the culture differences, when they get together with some of us, you know, we is the comp the 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 competition or the culture crash. It makes it a little difficult. So I figured that out. That what is it lacking? Why it's always difficult for us being able to, you know, get together with some of our. Um, fellows that are born here and I think it was communication and also culture differences that we we have to balance the differences to make things work and I figured out that okay let's bring it into real in reality and figure out how this could you know help the community and the society to learn things from it. Great and what is it about this project that made you want to become a co-producer? Well uh, when Kobe told me about it it was it was amazing you know it sounded so great it sounded good uh, it, it sounded like something that was not there, you know, that, and we always want to, you know, be innovators, we always want to create. So when he spoke to me about it, it sounded like a phenomenal idea. So I said, okay, let's jump on it. Good. And how did he settle on Ifyodo? Interestingly, um, I was asking for who can fit onto this show because it has to be relatable, it has to be something that is authentic and real. And I had my, you know, chat with a, a lot of the industry people, celebrities that knows, and everybody was recommending a few other. By then, I didn't even really know a few other like that. Mm -hmm. And I did a lot of check, and I realized that she have a story to tell, mm -hmm. and she's looking for love. And she had been disappointed with love stories. I checked all of that, and after going through that and discussing with my co-producer, she was perfect fit. Mm -hmm. And um, I think we decided to go with her, and she embraced it because she was she actually craving to find because her parent, you know, African parent. When are you gonna get married? When are you mm -hmm. gonna get, you know, get kids and stuff? So she really wanted to, and she had been in Ghana. She had not found anyone. Disappointed relationship there. So she was like, okay, it's time for me to come back here and, you know, see Rican or what I can find in the U.S. And that's that's how we kind of get this. If you order to be there. And looking at the skill that you are producing this on, um, what were some of the challenges that you went through to get it off the ground? Yeah, the the challenge is obviously, uh, you know, you shooting. A, a reality show of 10 episodes and you have over 30 you know cast and crew dealing with and you have a limited time people came from all over the place all over the United States and even overseas to be part of this so you you cannot you don't have a room to miss anything and um, you know managing getting the people to be at the right place traveling from one location to other locations the, the challenges was enormous but the exciting thing is the crew that I have worked with, we all understand the vision and how we want to take this to. And, you know, maybe it, it's the first in kind, mm -hmm. you know, African reality show shot in the diaspora. Mm -hmm. So everybody was determined for us to succeed. And mm -hmm. with that, we, we have successfully 
done something that is, is, is really never done before. You know, so it's 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 just left to the the audience to to judge what we and even to the, do. the makeup of the uh, cast, the contestants is quite very Pan African. Uh, how did you succeed in getting all of these people to take part? I mean, we put it out there, right? <laughs> and uh, people, people, when people heard about it, they were excited to be a part of it. You know, we had challenges, of course. Uh, there were people who who um, um, signed up for it and later disappointed. There were people who were just on it, started putting out there that I'm on the show, you know, were already excited about it. So uh, we had good feedback uh, with, with uh, people that wanted to be on the show. And when they saw was a fear, people were excited too. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people were reaching out to uh, Kobe. And so getting the people was not the, the hardest thing at all. Mm -hmm. Some and people I, even have to filter it out. Yeah, mm -hmm. and I can add to that that we all were also determined that the show would be Pan-African, you of know, course, bringing the course. whole continent to be part of this. Mm -hmm. Of course. So we were really looking out that we will get ever representa you know, representative from sure. different part of the continent exactly. to be part of this show and we yeah. were able to you know, achieve that goal. We have a Miss Congo who made an appearance, you know, mm -hmm. so we kind of make it very broad to the, to, cool. the, to the continent. And we did talk about the challenges, but looking back after going to the editing bench and now you have the whole 10 episodes out, when you look back, was it one thing that gives you the most joy? <laughs> the most joy is it's, it's how surprisingly and amazingly all the talent and everyone involved this show able to relate to to the story mm -hmm. you know the the, the, the story of Ifiodo and how they were the first they come in I look at this I'm, I'm always with this show and every day I see something surprised like mm -hmm. wow really this happened because some of these people come in and they just come in to have fun they want to be we see if you are chill hanger but then deeply they started getting emotion they started getting more you know deeper into it and when I'm watching them just you know, on a screen, on an editing screen, and look at the reactions and how emotionally they are getting involved. It's, it just put joy on my, you know, like it makes me very excited, like wow. And this is your first time producing, going uh, to producing? Uh, something of this scale, yes. I do my own lot of stuff, but cool. uh, there's something of this large scale, of course. And, and uh, what, 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 what was your highlight? Man, <laughs> <laughs> everything. I think uh, from, I mean, from, what should I say, from even getting budget to do this stuff. It's mm -hmm. part of the most mm -hmm. challenging things was getting that to, to happen. Mm -hmm. And uh, of course, when we got on set, it was overwhelming. Because it was a thousand and one things happening. Kobe's here mm -hmm. and there. I'm here trying to coordinate stuff, trying to see where everything is going, people calling on you. It was a lot on set. Uh, but it got to a point where it was so overwhelming, I wanted to just go home, mm -hmm. honestly. Mm -hmm. But uh, the, if you look forward to what you're creating, it was, it was um, for lack of a better expression, it, it was some. It was a dream come true, and mm -hmm. you didn't, you didn't know what was happening. But mm -hmm. it was just a fun ride to be on, okay. and so that kept me going. I think, mm -hmm. and every every little part of it, this big production for somebody like me who is kind of a, a new to that kind of environment, mm -hmm. it was challenging even mentally. Mm -hmm. But uh, we were not sleeping. You know, we're having yes. like two, three hours, four hours sleep, sleep every night, and still going. So everything, to me, everything was overwhelming. But the happiness of seeing the end result was what kept us going. Uh, Good. I can speak yeah. for myself, kept me going. Good. And I mean, in the beginning, you talked about things, times changing and how streaming is now very important. Uh, but you are taking a different route. Uh, you are sort of premiering the reality yeah. show. <laughs> so it's quite unusual, it's quite new. Mm. Why uh, did you take that uh, sort of direction? Well, I mean, I would say that the industry have changed. Um, we used to go to theater to watch movie. Now people literally stay home and watch movies on Netflix or you know any other streaming platform. Mm -hmm. And I figure out that um, hey, we we only watch reality show or TV series on TV, mm -hmm. right? Um, how about people have exclusive to mm -hmm. able to feel it to to enjoy it before it comes on TV? Mm -hmm. You know. So I think it's never done before mm -hmm. in the environment we're coming in. But have we ever tried before? Mm -hmm. No. And I think that we have to get to a point that we give the, the audiences yearning for something different. Mm -hmm. That is why all this telenovelas on, of, of Ghana mm -hmm. is being popular there because it's different. Yeah. And people are looking for something different okay. and they got that and they grabbed it. So mm -hmm. I think for me, I want us to introduce something different 
and who knows maybe there are audiences out there that want to have this experience that mm -hmm. hey I watched this whole series before it came on TV and that's what we bring it to, to you. So take us through how it's going to work. Is it like you take you buy a, a ticket and then it, it, it gives you access to 10 uh, episodes and you go each week or every day to go and watch? Awesome. So that's a very good question. This is how we structure it. It's 10 episodes and we don't want you to come and sit down one day to watch 10 episodes, mm -hmm. obviously. So the way we kind of arrange it, since it's new for all of us and mm -hmm. you, the audience as well, that you're going to still want to spend an hour and a half, like you're going to a movie theater to watch mm -hmm. a movie. And that hour and a half, we're going to give you episode one, two, three. Okay. So if you watch episode one, two, three today, right? Tomorrow, we want to give opportunity to somebody else that couldn't come with you today mm -hmm. to come and watch tomorrow. So we're going to repeat it tomorrow. And then the next day, which is the third day, mm -hmm. you, if you bought the ticket to buy, to come and watch the whole show, then you will come and continue mm -hmm. episode four, five, six mm -hmm. on the next day. I mean the third day, right? So it will keep going on like that. Okay. So if you buy the ticket for the whole entire series, mm -hmm. then you will come today, you take off tomorrow to chill, give a room for somebody else, and then you come the next day mm -hmm. to come and continue, and then you take a break, and then you come the next day. Mm -hmm. So at the end of the day, you're gonna use four days of your days to watch, to watch the entire episode. episodes. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. And uh, after the Ghana premiere, what next? Are you premiering all over the world as well? Well, we, we're thinking, um, of course, the Ghana premiere is to highlight and also bring the momentum because people are craving to watch the show mm -hmm. from day when we started shooting. Mm -hmm. And people are tired. Like, when this show is going to come out, you can check on social media. People are fed up and tired. So we feel that, okay, as we are waiting for the platforms on name or name platforms that are coming for the show. Mm -hmm. We want to give first exclusive to our audiences mm -hmm. out there. So after Ghana, I believe we are planning to do something in the U.S., mm -hmm. um, you know, specifically in the DMV where we shot most of the show, 90% mm -hmm. of it, and then also New York and uh, New Jersey. We shot some scenes there. So we'll do a U.S. premiere, um, looking into it by somewhere in February ending or March. Um, that is the plan at this point. Then after we announce which platform or where the whole world can able to have access, you know, access to watch it from their cool. living rooms. I mean, you've been in this for a very long time, from music to film and now television. Uh, what, do you, what do you think is um, some sort of a solution to distribution when it comes to our content? Do we need platforms that are specific to us or do we have to tap into the general sort of existing platforms to have our content there as well. I mean, we've come through quite a journey. Right, I, I, will, sh I, will, I will answer you know, some part of this question and I will, allow, I will let my co-producer to also say something because we, we talk all the time. And mm -hmm. the reason why he's part of me with this thing is we think alike, you know, we, we, we say things, I will be having a conversation and he's just, you know, even though I've been there, done that and he's, you know, like think the same way I think, and I feel comfortable that I, he will be somebody I can work with, and that's why we we, we co work on this project. On your question, I feel that um, you know people want to be familiar with what they know. So when they see Netflix, everybody feels that go to Netflix. Mm -hmm. When they see Amazon, everybody want to go to Amazon. We do have an individual platform that has been out there for streaming content. Mm -hmm. However, the problem I'm seeing is. You can create a platform in Ghana to stream an African movie or Ghana movie. The problem is we don't want to invest for the content and mm -hmm. a good content. Netflix became Netflix from Blockbuster mm -hmm. because they invested heavily, get content, get product that people want to see. Mm -hmm. Don't create a platform and ask me to bring you my African love and mm -hmm. put it on there. And once people view, then we will share a percentage because yeah. you created a platform. Mm -hmm. Everybody can create a platform. You understand? Yeah. So to me, creating a platform is one thing. Why everybody want to go to Netflix is they have invested, they have made a house name, they have earned a trust that the world and the public trust to able to, you know, trust the the um, content, the materials or the you know the content that is coming out of it is why people follow that. Mm -hmm. So if you if we get a right platform that can cater for our content mm -hmm. and invested and literally putting a good content on there. I think we're going to be able to, you know, consume just like we consume from Netflix and Amazon. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 To, 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 to uh, piggyback on what he said, it's not, I don't think it's the problem is that we don't, we don't have, people have these platforms. 
I think the issue is investment, as you said. The one thing is the, the investors themselves, the people that own the platforms, they're not trying to respect art and take people's art. They're not trying to respect the fact that you've made good content, that you pay for it. Mm -hmm. There's a problem. They're not trying to do that. And also, the uh, artists themselves, we're also not respecting art. Mm -hmm. Most of us are making, uh, trying to spend a $5,000 budget on something that requires a $100,000 budget, mm -hmm. trying to squeeze and, and do something too quickly to release. That, that I don't think works. People that have made great content are out there, they put their heart into it. Mm -hmm. And so that's what we need. I think in our part of the world, we need to respect art a little more rather than let's do it quick and put it out. Because if, you, if I have a platform and you haven't put in what I think should be put in, I'm not going to accept it, even if I have the money. So I think it's investment on both sides, mm -hmm. uh, the people that own the platform and people that are creating content. Great. So finally, is there going to be uh, My, Ameri My African Love uh, Season 2, 3 coming up? I, I think um, you hit right on it, on it because our, our vision was not just do one show or one you know, series or one um, season and stop it there. And I believe that when this show comes out and you watch it, you're the one going to ask for season two. Mm -hmm. And season two, you're going to ask for season three. So mm -hmm. I think we are locked in. We are in to stay. Uh, we're going to bring something unique, something different. I know when you hear a reality show, you think it's, uh, you know, it's all about fighting and shouting and screaming. We're bringing something with more substance, you know, mm -hmm. more of education as well as mm -hmm. also real thing that is going on uh, you know, for peop in people's lives. So um, season two will come, season three will come, and we'll keep going. Good. Who knows, we may be starting doing My African Love UK, My African Love Ghana, yeah. My African Love Nigeria. So who knows, Fantastic. maybe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe. Um, you know, um, if, let's see how the people respond to respond it. To and it. I have, I have, I, I think they're going to have a really, really good response to it. I think we put our heart into it, and uh, we hope that the audience will receive it the same and move on from there. Thank you very much. So that there you have it. Make sure you go and see the premiere if you're in Accra, Ghana, and then look forward to it on some platform near you very soon.